Execute. Sound check. Sound check. Testing. 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 Nothing. There will be a delay. Good. Cool. We will be on in one minute. Starting soon. Oh, that's what we look like. Ooh, that's what we look like, huh? Ooh, you know. Ooh, they uh, they say the camera adds ten pounds. <clears throat> it's like the camera adds two inches to my nose. Oh man, it's like a big old beak right there. Yeah. Look at it. It's yeah, like it's just staring at me. I know. Jeez. What I don't like is that when I'm looking at you, I can't see it and what it looks like. So I'm just gonna have to like do my best to look at the camera screen. You, just like a little oscillating fan. Go like this though. Blow on me. Ooh, that's nice. Whatever, dude. At least you don't look like a fat checkered board. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do my best. Speaking of oscillating fan, like I think it's a terrible invention. Why? It spreads well, the joy. No. Yeah, it, uh, I guess. I just feel like you wait too long for that pleasure. You know, like I think oscillating fans need to be on speed or something. No, it's like a roller coaster. Well, but it, it would be so much... Oh, it's like, oh, that felt... Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I feel like if you're in a room, you got six people, and your only option is an oscillating fan, they need to be faster. Like a turbo jet? Like turbo... <laughs> like a sprinkler. Yeah, but like a fast sprinkler. sprinkler. No, no, fast sprinkler. Yeah. I mean, that's... What your, are we doing? Oh, oh yeah yeah hey well, guys <laughs> welcome welcome to the podcast this is our first episode of our new podcast yeah. called there's a turtle in my soup yeah. because nobody likes turtle soup it took us four takes that's that's why we're on just a little late because we kept nobody going there's a soup in my turtle, turtle soup okay yeah there, there's a soup in my turtle say, turtle soup is really big in new orleans well they're a bunch of weirdos not true yeah. i guess not uh, true but uh, whatever man yeah. Culture. Well, okay. Explain to them as to why I take offense to turtle soup. Who am I? Turtles bleed a lot. I, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, if you're here, that means you probably know one of us. Because we kind of just started advertising this today. So this over we're here, good at to my right, it's going to be your left on the screen, is Kyle. One of my longtime best friends. We call him Turtle. Turtle, why do we call you Turtle. Well, it started off as an insult, but I took it in stride. I used to you get called lean turtle. Into it. Well, you know, you got to accept it. Otherwise, you're just going to cry and take your base. Yeah, but lean I got in, called turtle because I walk pitch. slow. I walk slow. I got ADD. I like to look around and look at things. Something's shiny. I want to see what's going on over there. I think a little bit also, you kind of have like the posture of an upright turtle. You mean I'm thick? No, no, like your your posture, like your your spine. You just like. Are you, you saying I'm a hunchback? You got this turtle like posture. You're a turtle. I don't know. Just the way your shoulders like start to look like a shell. I don't know. No, yeah, well, you have the nose of a bird. Yeah. I like birds. You do. You have great bird shirts. Yeah. And speaking of the man who has great bird shirts, 
This is my longtime BFFF, Connor, a.k.a. Chef Connor. Do we want to do Chef Connor, or you want to... How do you want to do that? I like Chef. Just Chef? Just Chef. Just Chef. Just Chef. Like you're the boss. The chief. No, Chef. chef. Well, Chef is chief in French. That's that's how it kind of came about. Do you really want to be French, though? Could be worse. You're going to smell. Fair. Yeah. You take good care of those armpits. I've smelled them. It's nice. Just Chef. Uh, El Jefe, as some recommend. No, just Chef. Just Chef works. Yeah, just Chef. So I want kind of our viewers to learn a little bit about you. About me? How about some fun facts? Maybe something kind of off the wall. Maybe something we don't even need to know. But we're going to learn. Ooh, fun facts about me. Go learn today. Go learn today. Go learn. I'll give you a fun fact about me. I am uber smart about the dumbest things. Yeah. Uh, you you, you want to specify there? Oh, man, I think it speaks for itself. No, okay. no, no, that was pretty broad. That, that was <sighs> fine. Okay, so. That was, that was really vague. So, like, some people What's Uber, were just, for one? Uber? Uber. Uber, lots. That's German. Okay, okay yeah. Look at us. We're all cur- cultural and stuff. French, German. What's Uber up? We're smart about... Just random things. Like random tidbits that I pick up that don't really apply to life. Like, I I don't know how to work on transmissions or build a wall or something like that. But I can tell you what aloha means. Aloha in Hawaiian, alo <laughs> means face-to-face. And ha is the breath of life. So you say aloha, face-to-face. You get face-to-face with somebody. And then you, (laughs) yeah, you do that. You give them your breath of life, hopefully after a mint. (laughs) Well, Well, yeah, hopefully after a mint. Yeah, that's not the little, (laughs) (laughs) take it back. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But yeah, I just, I know random things. Something I think um, that you're selling yourself short on is, you may not know how to like change out a transmission or fix a transmission, but you could convince someone that you do know how. You are you're one of the best bullshitters again, I know. Again, again, man, it's <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, what's up, Duff? I don't know a lot, but I know some, and I know how to sell it. Uber means above in German, actually. Well, then above, above. smart stuff. Like I'm above it. Whatever. Okay, that's fair. See, I learned something new though, and yeah. I'm gonna bust that out somewhere down the road. And everybody's going to be like, why do you know that? And we'll be like, because. That's just how I do things. Okay, so you're uber What about smart. you? What about you? What's what's your random fact? Questioning mine. Well, I think over time, everyone will learn a little bit more about us. But something I was thinking about earlier today is how much I don't like umbrellas. I'm, anti, I'm anti-umbrella. What? So you're like anti-Rihanna. Yeah. Umbrella, Ella, Just Ella. that song in particular. Oh, so not the actual umbrella. No. Y- oh, yeah, yeah. No. What do you the have against umbrellas? They physical, protect you. Um, okay. They protect you from the harshness of nature. <laughs> you want to get into this? Yeah, bring okay, it. Okay, bring it. Let's, let's get into this. I'll defend you. Umbrellas. I'll defend umbrellas. I don't like that there's such a small window. Like, I can't open it inside, otherwise bad luck. That sucks. So, <laughs> and then you want it to protect you from rain. Like, okay, so if I can't open it inside, I have to open it outside, I'm going to get raindrops on me. You know what can do an umbrella's job better? A poncho. But but nobody has ponchos. That's my issue. But, I don't like umbrellas. Plus, they're a pain. Have you ever seen the way that I react with inanimate objects when they don't work how I want them to work? Pretty sure they get thrown. It's, it's frustrating. Well, it doesn't have a brain, so I mean, it's not the it's not operating properly. It's you're not. I operating just properly. prefer a poncho. Why though? Then you're gonna have a wet thing to you, fold up you, later. You will not have a wet thing. Yeah, oh, you oh, will. Okay, well, like the outside will be wet, but yeah, like, just turn it inside out. Let it air dry. Whatever. It won't air dry inside. Then out. Then you don't have to worry about bad luck when you put a poncho on inside. I'm pretty sure if you're wearing a poncho, that's already your bad luck. I'd rather have an umbrella. You can accessorize with an umbrella. No. Yeah. No. You can get something to match your outfit perfectly. You can accessorize with a poncho. Ew. No. They're just... It's like a... It's like a body condom. 
It just traps in all your smells. It doesn't it's trap like it the, in. Your face is open. Okay, cool. So condom. all the smells are going to come up that, to your that face? That would be literally the worst condom. That was a terrible analogy. Shame on you. <sighs> it's on the spot. Leave me alone. Shame on you. Ponchos. Pro poncho. <sighs> Anti-umbrella. That's the fun little tidbit about me. I'll have more fun tidbits later, but that's just what I thought of today. I think you're just overreacting about umbrellas. I am. It is a little irrational. Well, but you know, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes you can use them as a cane. Uh, the penguin found a great okay. use for them. Okay, penguin's a baller. Yeah. Yeah. So, you going to go against a Batman character? Oswald Cobblepot? Yeah. Who's being played by Colin Farrell, by the way. In the new movie? In the new movie, Colin Farrell is uh, going to be popping out as Penguin. I hope he has an Irish accent. That'd be cool. I just enjoy Irish accents. I mean, have we ever heard Colin Farrell with an Irish accent in a movie? Yeah, dude, in most of them. Really? Uh, he's got one out. It's on Netflix right now called uh, Kill the Irishman. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's another good one called I haven't uh, even The seen Gentleman. Him. Honestly, I haven't even seen him in a movie since Phone Booth. <laughs> oh, why is that your last one? <laughs> I mean, I would understand if you stopped after, like, Daredevil or something like that, or... Oh, that was all around bad movie. Yeah, no, he's yeah. he's gotten he's gotten kind of better on things, but... See, I... Another fun fact about me, I am very much into movies. I love to watch I love movies. That. I think I, pop culture in general. Pop culture, yeah, yeah. I like to stay in touch with the young hips, we'll the young hippie, hip kids. We'll be discussing pop culture a lot. Well, because, like... Here's the thing. When I watch a movie, I don't just watch the movie. Like I'll watch the movie all the way through, and then I'll go back and I'll start over, and I watch it with the director's commentary, of course, with actors' director's commentary, com- of course, the director's commentary. Well, because like you, that's where you find out the fun facts, or like when somebody was a yep. snob behind scenes. One of my favorites is a uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall director's commentary, where they talk about um, one of the executive producers. His name was Richard Vane, mm-hmm. but like he'd get upset if you called him Rick or Richard. He's like, no, you you call me Dick. It's and so be Dick. So when they introduced him to <laughs> Jonah Hill, he's like, yeah, this is Dick Vane. And Jonah, <laughs> Jonah laughed in his face, hysterically laughed Who in his wouldn't? face. Like, and he goes, yeah, you go, let me just inject some heroin into my dick vein. <laughs> Who would take that seriously? It's like, he just took it, too. <laughs> oh. He's actually the guy, if you watch the movie, you know, um, Russell Brand's character is wearing that terrible shirt. That's that, all that of his Sarah shirts. Gets him. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. The one that Sarah buys him that he right. hates, it's... Um, the guy that walks by and is like, hey, nice shirt. Ooh, nice and he's wearing shirt. the same shirt. That's Dick Vane. Oh. Yeah. That looks like a Dick Vane shirt. <laughs> it does look like a Dick Vane shirt. <laughs> it does. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's also, we'll introduce how we, or we'll talk about how we've known each other. We've known each other for, damn, like 15 years now? Since eighth grade. Yeah. And I'm coming up on that rough 30 age. I'm not excited about that, but whatever. Yeah, so, so that's well, like, I mean, start of eighth grade, so we were 13, so... Oh, more, more than that. Oh. Yeah. Couple goals, so y'all. we're going on 16 years, you know? Yeah, damn. Uh, we met us. in the principal's office, and then we realized that we had classes together. What were you in the principal office for? I can't uh, remember what I was in there for. I was throwing something. I think I was being a dick in one of my classes, and I got kicked out. I think we I, were great students. I think it was something dumb like throwing a paper ball. But, I mean, I don't even know if my mom knows that because they didn't call her or anything. I just went. It was it was. Benson, I feel like back it? then, though, if you got in trouble, you got scalded. Like, yeah, you would get well, scalded before it, you would actually Benson, get in trouble. Right? Wasn't that his name? Yeah, Benson. Benson. Yeah. And so he just like, what are you doing here? Oh, I did this. Well, stop doing that. No. Yeah. Nowadays, though, like. Kid gets in trouble at school. He's getting parents called, grandparents called, what? third cousins what? called, so that they can have an intervention and what? talk about his feelings. We had parents called. <laughs> don't don't shy away from the fact that we had parents called. No, okay. The only other time that I had my parent called, I had my mom called by the school twice. Uh, one of them, one of them was because I skipped class because. Oh. I don't even think my mom knows about all my skip classes. She does now. <laughs> no, mine was because uh, like when I was eighteen, my senior year, I had I went to two schools. I went right. to Moline right. and I went to UT right. in the afternoon. Yep. They have different uh, spring breaks and stuff. 
So like sometimes Moline would be in school oh, and UT would be that. out. Yeah, so like that. I had an afternoon off just to do nothing. And there was one day I went to school and I just I wasn't feeling it. Oh no, my mom didn't get called. She caught me. Oh, yeah, my mom caught me skipping school. So UT wasn't in and I decided not to go like go anywhere. So I was just out riding around mm-hmm. and or maybe UT, I don't know, I'm terrible at my own memory. But anyway, so I'm out riding my motorcycle, and I was out cruising around the Quad Cities, and I thought, like, I don't know, like, my mom's job, she travels around the city, like, I need to get home so that I don't get caught, and I could play it off like I just got out of school early. So I come up to this intersection at this red light, and it's like a busy road, and I'm like, oh, this is the road that my mom is going to be on. I was like, I'm going to see her coming from this way, and she's going to be real mad at me. And so I was looking over, waiting to see her car, and from behind me, I hear, hey. Oh, I know that hey. (laughs) Oh, I know that hey. I've heard that hey so many times. And I look back, and she's like hanging out the window, and she goes, why aren't you in school? Uh, 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 Snow uh, day? No, straight up panic, and I go, I'm skipping. Was it in summer? Yeah, it was in summer. <laughs> oh, over spring break. Or it was uh, like, uh, no, 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 it was day. like, yeah, fall or spring or something, but like, couldn't even come hey, up with a good excuse like that. Here. Around here, yeah. yeah. But I couldn't even come up with a good excuse. Like, she just straight up goes, <laughs> why aren't you in school? I'm like, oh, I'm uh, skipping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't say like, the school caught on fire, so I left. Like, no, I was just like, oh, I'm skipping school. She goes, Follow me to the school now. And I had to turn around and go back to school. My mom, like, might as well have drugged me in by the ear and been like, he was skipping class or whatever. <laughs> and so I got, like, an in-school suspension for that. And I had to, like, I had to sit uh, at after a fourth period, which was study hall that I never went to. Yeah. <laughs> I had to go and sit in in-school suspension for the rest of the week. And I was like, this is bull crap. Like, I don't even have anything to do. Like, I could be going, I could be so productive at home. I wouldn't have been, but I could have been. <laughs> Could've. Yeah, the other time, uh, the other time my mom got a call was because it was St. Patty's Day, senior year. Yep. Oh, such a oh, good time. Oh, I know this one. Such a good time. I had this leprechaun hat, like stood up real tall and it had an orange beard, like what I'm rocking now, but it was fake because at the time I was nothing but patchy because I hadn't hit puberty yet. Saying the principal's yet. office chef, uh, one of my teachers. Rude. I didn't go myself. I'm yeah. like, I'm, Can I, I come chew in here for a minute? <laughs> I did a bad thing. Yeah. Hey, uh, Give me a pep talk. Yeah. I'm a bit of a terrible kid. I'm just going to hang out in here for it a little was, bit. It was Mrs. Walbert, though. Oh, she was so... Was, I totally oh, smashed I, I oh. smashed a chair on her foot one time, and she like yeah. smacked me in the back of the head for it. It was great. Nice. It was like, well, I mean, smash her foot, and I was like, my bad. It was, it was Mrs. Walbert. It was first period, like, right off the bat. Like, you're bad. Anyway, St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day. I had this uh, topic. leprechaun hat that I went and I was like, it's St. Patty's Day. I've got some Irish in me somewhere. So I'm going to rock this St. Patty's Day hat. Well, you got the red beard. So I got like, the red beard. It's actually Belgian, but I wanted to be Irish for the so day. So on cam, you can't really tell that much that it's a red beard, but it's You'll catch of, me in that sunlight and it's, it's a, uh, a gorgeous red. It's got a hint of red. But, uh. So I walk into school and I was like, if somebody tells me to take off this hat, I'm just going to take off running Mm -hmm. until I got first period, which was gym class. Mm -hmm. So I walk in, I'm all confident wearing this hat and I made it past like the first like hall monitors on the first floor, made it up set of steps to the second floor. And as I was trying to, as I was trying to get by there, I heard somebody say, Hey, I didn't know if it was for me. I didn't know nothing. I just take off running. And I'm running through the halls, and I'm diving over people, and I'm, like, juking them because I was actually in shape at the time. And uh, I was yelling, they're trying to take me Lucky Charms. They're trying to take me Lucky Charms. And I went to jump in between, like, two teachers, uh, Miss Gardette. Man. I wish, I wish I was with you so I could be like, who does <laughs> number two work for? They're trying to take me Lucky Charms. Yeah. But uh, she shoulder-checked me. Cause she was just not playing that game. Yeah, ran around the school. She's stout. Oh yeah, she was a, she was a gnarly one. Made it to the gym class. Bumped into Mister Gorgel, and he looked at me and he was like, "What are you supposed to be?" Um, a I mean, leprechaun. Pretty obvious though. Well, I thought so too, but all I right, that was pretty obvious. You had the uh, 
He's a gym teacher. You had green shorts. Was rocking out to a, like a white shirt. You had a white shirt with the, orange or green suspenders and four the leaf hat. clover suspenders. Yeah. The hat. And did you have a like a faux red beard? Yeah, it was a fake one that was yeah. attached to that. Yeah. But so he asked me what I was. He asked me, yeah, I couldn't grow anything. But he asked me what I was, and I was like, I'm a leprechaun. And I started to take the hat off, and he goes, no. Keep it on. It was kind of sexual now I'm thinking about it. You know, he kind of looks like Steven Seagal without the ponytail, doesn't he? Yeah, but I feel like a he's more bit. badass. He is more badass. Also, I've seen that man squat, and it's not it's not yeah. great. Yeah. Anyway. He's nimble. So he uh, he goes, I've always wanted to see a leprechaun play dodgeball. And I was like, oh, dude, game on. No joke, the hottest game I've ever played. Because, like, that hat just kept all the heat in. And when I got done, I was doing nothing but sweating. It was, like, felt, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, man. It's a terrible choice for a hat. But So I made it to my second period class. Got sent down to the dean's office because I wouldn't take it off. And my dean, she goes... Why are you wearing that hat? I'm like, it's St. Patty's Day. Yeah. I was like, oh, hi, top of the morning to you. And she goes. I knew her really well. Yeah. She was not a fan of me that day. She wasn't even my <laughs> dean. My dean was supposed to be Lopez. Like, I knew her hell? really well. But so. They kept switching around like each year. Yeah. And so I think I had her freshman and then junior. And then I would just, what, if I got in trouble, I would just go see her senior I year. I never had to see any of them, so I didn't know any better. But she yeah. gave me the opportunity. She goes, you can either take it off or go home. It's like a love-hate relationship. That's like the dumbest thing you can tell a course, senior. Yeah, of course I'm going to go home. Yeah, okay, bye. Of course I'm going to go home. Yeah, left, uh, hanging out with somebody at a park, and I got a phone call from my mom, and she goes, did you go to school today? Hey. No, it wasn't that. She hit me with like that, that trap question. Yeah. I already <laughs> did know you go to school today? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The rhetorical bear trap? Yeah. Well, it's like, but it, I could have got out of that. Did you go to school today? Yeah. Really? Because I just got a cool. I got a call from school saying that you didn't go. I did go. I did go. I didn't stay. Yeah. You didn't ask me that. Lawyered. Mm-hmm. But so she dragged me back to school, walked in to Lancey's office, still wearing the hat. And she was like, I "Take did, that off." She went back to school. Yeah. Because I'm 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 a rebel. But so she told me to take it off, and she was like, I gave you the opportunity to take it off. Or, and I was like, yeah, you said take it off or go home. So I went home. She goes, you're supposed to make the right decision. Like, <laughs> you should not trust me with that responsibility. That is on you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, those are my adventures in the principal's office. I don't, other than that, like, I was a, I was a great student. I went to school all the time. I sometimes really tried hard. But, like. That's all you could ask for. Yeah. I mean, shoot. Nowadays, all these kids are just with their Snapchat. They're just skipping school all the time this yeah. year. <laughs> you know how much crap that is? Like our senior year, we didn't have a single. We didn't have a single snow day. We didn't have a single snow day. And now, the, now these little runs get to take like three months off and okay. still graduate. Yeah, still graduate. Like even the ones that they're okay. like, I'm like a D minus. Yeah, here's, your, here's your diploma. Get out. Like, good luck. <laughs> good luck in the future. Yeah, it is a crap situation. Well, so I asked somebody, uh, I asked some senior, they were helping out with some kind of function at like a union hall. And I was like, oh, lucky you guys, you got all this time off. And they're like, we're in sports. We lost our scholarships. Mm-hmm. And if, I mean, I might as well have just been smacked in the face by these kids because I had no retort except just like, sorry for your loss and like <laughs> try to move on. But like the line that I was in was not moving. So like, mm-hmm. there's just that awkward, like, like looking over my shoulder oh, at I him. Fucked up. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I would also like to point out that I have yet to cuss. Connor's done it twice. We're going to try and edit ourselves. See, but the problem is though, it well, with his nickname chef. I think it's kind of obvious what he does it's cutthroat well and i mean being a chef in a, chef in life a is, kitchen it's, it's cutthroat you you hear a lot of stuff you hear yeah. a lot of don't let that chef from sesame street fool you okay <laughs> it's not <laughs> don't rip the scholarships <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude they got nothing this is just gonna be a bunch I've of lost my scholarship and you just have to stand there like yeah, oh, yeah. okay I lost. I lost uh what was the what was the dude for the eagles uh pompelli pompelli the dude from the Eagles in the 70s that did a walk-on and became like, they made a movie about it. Mark Wahlberg Mark, played him. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg. Vince Papali. Vince Papali. They could be a Vince Papali. 
Sure. Probably not that much of a fun name to say, yeah, but yeah. Vince Papali. I guess. Whatever you say. Dreams could happen. You don't think you could walk on to something right now? Getting like, off topic. Okay, fine. Where were we at? We're talking about your job. Oh, yeah. yeah There's not a whole lot to say. Oh, whatever. Because I'm, I'm not working right now. Our <sighs> restaurant closed in April. So, and that's, we're dealing with a very strange time right now in our country where, in the world, really, where so many people who... You're just living like a normal life, and then they're all just, of a they're sudden... They're just looking at my nose. They're just like, I just keep looking at you, and they're just looking at my nose. It's because it's power. It's power. That's why he's such a good chef, because he can smell all the ingredients from across the from across the kitchen. I mean... That onion's bad. I, I can a little bit. You, gotta, you cannot. You got to use your senses, man. See, okay, you got a snoo- uh, super sniffer for food. I got one for electrical fires. <laughs> Have you ever smelled an electrical fire? I've never smelled an electrical fire. Yes, you I've have. Ne- I've never started yes, you, an electrical fire. Okay, nobody intends to, but you have smelled an electrical fire. Probably. Remember my ranger? Remember my ranger when you abandoned me? You abandoned me in a time of need. Don't you bring it up. Yeah, don't I'm going to bring it up. Okay. Don't you bring this up. Fun fact. I don't want to talk about this. No, it's talking about it. It's not a fun fact, this. but this is a great story. So, no. <laughs> when when we were 16, I had a vehicle. It was an 88 Ranger. This thing was just, it was a... It was part Bronco, too. It, it was, was like a Frankenstein. Was, so, it had the front quarter panels of a Bronco, too. The rear quarter panels, we straight up, like, cut out of sheet metal and made it, like, bondoed it. And, uh, so, <laughs> it was Connor's, it was your... No, it wasn't your birthday. It was another day that it was just like we needed to get him. It was cold as crap. We needed to get him out. It might have been your birthday. We needed to get him out of the house. And so went to go pick him up, convinced his mom to let him come out with me for a little bit. And I had been having these issues because I had been, I had customized, customized. I threw on some off-road lights onto my Ranger. And again, not knowing a lot. I kept blowing fuses every time I would turn on these lights. Yeah. And so I would blow this fuse. (laughs) I would blow this fuse. It wasn't my fault. All right. There's a frayed wire in there. Anyway, every time I would blow this fuse, I would think like, oh, the the fuse is too small. So I would go and put in a bigger fuse. Like I think I had like a five amp in there or something or uh, whatever. That five blew. I was like, okay, so I need a bigger one. I put a 10 in there. That blew. Oh, man. This must draw a lot of electricity. 15. That blue. I was like, all right. I put a 30 in there. I don't know anything about electronics. I don't I don't know anything. Like, I know some stuff, but not, not important things. So I pick him up, and we were driving down the road, and we were at this stop sign, and I remember smelling something. Damn it, I remember the smell. Yeah. I remember the smell yeah. because I said, maybe if you speed up, we'll yeah. outrun the smell. <laughs> well, because like, we started to go and the smell went away. I was like, oh, maybe it was just that spot. Yeah. And then it started to come back. I was like, oh, man, it's following us. He goes, if you go faster, you won't smell maybe it. Maybe we can outrun that smell. So I I womp on that gas pedal, right? <laughs> And all I see is my dash lights. Because you had these huge tires, and it was a four-cylinder, and we're going hills because it's... Yep. I have been compensating since 16 Valley. years old. I have been compensating so long. I still got big tires all the time. But so I womp on it, and all I see is my dash lights just really start to glow. And I was like, man, that is new. And then and then I look up at my dash, and I see this... I see the smoke going across the uh, across the gauges, and I was like, "Well, that's not good." And I see a spark shoot up from one of my speakers, and I'm just driving, and I was like, "Dude, I think my truck's on fire!" <gasps> oh my god, my truck's on fire! And I yelled it out loud to Connor, hoping for some solid best friend advice. And then when I look to him, I go, "Dude, my truck's on fire! What do I do, dude?" The door is just sitting there flapping in the wind, <laughs> and he's okay. gone. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold the up. shit look, out of that. Look, 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 look. When I saw the smoke coming out of the dash, right? I'm going to abandon him. That was your first thought. Okay, here's my defense. No, here's my defense. I grew up playing Grand Theft Auto. 
when that car's on smoke, you get the fuck out. You dip. You don't give it a chance. The video games have warped our look, children's minds. Look, man, once the car's on smoke, you hit like one more bump, you're going to blow up. I got out. I was like 16. You don't give abandon me, me, though. Give me a break. So, you should have done it, too. So I pull over. Just ghost ride it. <laughs> Just I'm out. let it fly. Yeah. Cruel Britannia. Just let it soar into somebody's living room. Can you put that out? Look, I, I stand by it. Whatever. I stand by it. I see a vehicle on smoke. I'm out. So Audi 5000, <laughs> in the words of Ice Cube. So I pull over. And I open up the fuse panel, and I see sparks shooting out of this fuse that I put in there. And I pull it out real quick. Kills all the lights. Don't know if I put the fire out. First thought that I have, I'm going to call my dad. Because that is the answer to everything. Anytime I'm in any kind of trouble, I just I just got to be like, my dad will know. And so I'll call my dad, and he picks up on like second ring, because he's a champ. And he goes, hey, what's going on? Dad, second dad. ring because he's a champ. Yeah, but I'm like, Dad, always second ring. Dad, my truck's on fire, and there's a pause, and like I can see him processing the information that I just gave him, and again, same tone, just as calm. He goes, "Are you in it?" Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Thank you. I, go, I had the right idea. And I go, Get "No." Out. I go, "No." And he goes, "What do you call me for?" I was like, "I don't yeah. know." Fatherly <laughs> advice, like. <laughs> Guide me right now What are you calling me for? <laughs> I don't know Because I didn't know what else to do Because I know mom would just pass the phone to him yeah. <laughs> Hey, your son's truck's on fire Are you still in it? <laughs> and it was like Thank you And I told him what happened I was like, the fuse was shooting sparks And I go to pull it And it turned everything off He was like, alright, we'll get it home He goes, we'll fix it later And then Connor comes running up Out of the shadows I just hear him run up, Kyle's truck's on fire, his truck's on fire. And I was like, you better be talking to the fire department. He goes, no, I'm talking to Zach. He lives down the road. I'm like, what the fuck is he going to do? He's 16 too. He we don't made know it out nothing. Alive. Look, we made it out alive. We're here today, right? We did. We got we're a great today. story out of it. Look, we're here. That, I think that was also, we still, my dad was also a champ because he let me borrow his truck after that. And I believe that was the night that you sneezed and blew a giant booger and wiped it on the bottom of his seat that you told me you put on his sock. Dude, your boogers are something. We really going to talk about this right now? I'm just saying, that'll come up later for sure. We could talk about that later. Maybe it is because you got a bigger nose? Probably. I'm we, not going to lie, I'm kind of jealous. Look, we could talk about that later. And then maybe, I mean, maybe we won't even get to tell that story because like Darren will murder me. <sighs> He'll actually murder Dude, me. He'll be yeah. like, I knew it. I knew you put a booger on my seat. You're dead. And he'll just like scissor kick me. It just like, looked like he'll, Connor. He'll literally jump six feet in the air and like kick my head off. He is quite nimble still. He'll literally do that. Well, and like, but the the point of this is most of our stories together, like even if stuff goes completely wild, we still, we have a great time doing it. Usually... One of us gets hurt, and usually that one is me because I am so... And it's funny. Because <sighs> that's what we do. I don't want to think that it's funny that I get hurt, but it is funny in the process of us doing it. But we and laugh first and we ask if you're okay later. That's just that's how, how life works. Unless you're Bree, who Bree does not handle Yo, that, blood very well. This is the four-year anniversary of the battering incident. Like this day? Today. Specifically today is the four year anniversary of the battering incident. I still have a pocket think, from that. I think at this point in time, I was probably getting off work. You guys were all excited to show me what you had done for me. And it was all probably going down like right around this minute. The the battering incident. Yeah, probably. Probably about nine thirty. Uh so Th- this is one of my favorite stories ever. <laughs> Glad I could help. This is this is one of my favorites ever. So actually. <laughs> okay, so Bree hits me up. Bree hits me up and she goes, "Hey, I bought Connor this pool table." I I bought this pool table. You did? Yeah, I bought the pool table cuz oh. I I'd always wanted a pool table in our house. Right. Uh, it got shipped in that morning. I got it. How do you get that shipped in? It was oh, huge. Yeah, though. It, was, it was a process. Like they had an extra like $30 shipping for dudes to like help you get it in your door. It I was believe huge. it. Yeah, it was huge and heavy and I was like, "No, no, I'm cool." Yeah, I don't want to pay thirty bucks. I'll get in the door. I got in the door. I had to work that day, and I mean, long yeah. Shift, so he had to. He I had probably to work. got it for like ten. Yeah, yeah. 
he had to work, and so Bree wanted to surprise him by having this pool table set up. I totally up, ready was down to, to build it myself. I was totally down to oh, build yeah, it myself. Oh yeah, yeah. That but a, she wants to be. That was a sweet idea, though. Yeah, she wanted to be. That's that, awesome on her part. That ride or die. Yeah. But so. Uh, ride or die. Ride or die. So she hits me up and asks me to come help her put this thing together. I go, yeah, sure. And go over. We're putting this thing together. Connor has... Okay, so another fun fact about us. We are comic nerds. We're comic fans. Yeah, specifically Batman. For He's me. more specifically Batman. Specifically I'm, Batman. I'm all of them. And, and mostly DC, too. But I, well, it's because DC has better comics. I dabbled a lot in X-Men when I was young, too. And, and, and Spider-Man. X-Men and Spider-Man when I was young. Na-na. But mostly Batman. Any hooser. So... Helping Bree put this uh, pool table together, and they got this sweet batarang style pocket knife. Yeah, I'm trying to remember blades... who I got that from. I can't remember if Bree got it for me, or I think my cousins got I'm it. I'm not going to lie. It's in the studio right now, and I'm staring at I'm it. I'm staring at it right now. It. I yeah, want it you're, so bad. You're also not allowed to touch it. I'm not allowed to touch it. Okay. Okay. So let me tell you why I'm not allowed to touch it. I've been using, I was using this to cut the boxes open. And I put it on, yeah, look at how sweet that looks. Why, how would you not want to use that? Those things are sharp. It Very should come sharp. with a warning. But anyway, so I put it so on the uh, cardboard boxes. Super sharp. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Put it on the cardboard boxes, not thinking anything of it because I'm an idiot. Yeah, because you guys had taken it apart, and it, yeah. was, it was a mess down there. There's cardboard and, oh, yeah. and the little uh, so packing popcorn we also had all pizza. over the floor. We yep. also had some pizza ready, yep. and you know it was a sweet thing that Bree wanted to do for Connor by having this set up and there ready was, for him, super and cool. that was very yeah. That was just a beautiful moment for her. And since I've known him longer, I wanted to steal that glory because I loved him first. Fair. That's right, I yeah. said it. Yeah, fair. So <laughs> just got so weird, but so I wanted to be, I wanted me to be the first thing that he saw when he walked in this door. Yeah. And I was standing at the bottom of the stairs holding a piece of pizza and a pizza box. And as I was walking towards the bottom of the stairs, I tripped. So, hold up, hold up. Hmm. The thing about this box, though, is this thing came completely disassembled, and this box was thin. I mean, it's, it's probably three, four inches thick, and then it was really long. So it was it was kind of a flimsy box. Yeah. And you guys had it set up against the wall, so it was leaning, and you had put the battering... But it wasn't open. I'll give you props. No. The battering was not open, but you'd put the battering on top of the box that was leaning against the wall, mm-hmm. just asking for it to fall. No offense. Yeah. It, it was, you're asking for it to fall. I'm dumb. But anyway, so, so then we put, we're walking to the bottom of the stairs so that when he comes to look down the stairs, uber smart. he sees me. Yeah, uber smart. So I wanted to be, <laughs> I wanted to be standing there. <laughs> And I trip over these boxes, and this knife falls, and like some Opens final, up. some final destination shit it, falls. That was final destination, right? Yeah, hits the floor, kicks open one of the blades, and it goes into the side of my shoe boot, like, yeah. side of your boot. I was wearing a not shoe, boot, straight like up good boot. boot. I think yeah. I, I still have those boots with the do hole you, in do it. You? Oh yeah, I can't wow. get rid of them. Yeah, but Are uh, still toed. Nope. Nope. Although I don't think it mattered because it was kind of the side of your foot. Oh yeah, no, there was no protecting that. Yeah, it was on the side. But so it snuck in like Like, just above the sole. Yeah, right. And went into my boot, and it was so sharp I didn't even feel it. Right. And so I just see it sticking out, and I thought like it was underneath my foot. So I look over to Bree, and I go, "Hey, Bree, come pull this out of my boot before I cut myself." (laughs) And so she comes over and just like yanks it out of the boot. And I still don't feel anything. Which, which, by the way, I was not downstairs. I was upstairs changing. I came in the back door. Access to the <laughs> basement the was right door. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I, I went right upstairs, got changed. So I wasn't there for any of this. Trans- nope. I was there for like when when yelling happened. Yeah, we didn't okay. have parental supervision. Yeah. But so I missed all of it. She takes the knife out of my boot and I'm still holding the box of pizza and a pizza. Just being a great friend. Yeah. Ride or die again. Yeah. And then I start to feel some warmth in my boot. And I go, man, that's not cool. And so I sit down, still holding never, the pizzas. You never want a warm boot. 
not not like, not like that. Not an instant one. That never, means never want to warm. You got boot. something in there you don't no. want. Yeah. But so I tell her, I'm like, hey, uh, can you go take my boot off real quick? She takes my boot off, and like a stream of blood comes out and spills onto the cardboard, not the carpet, the cardboard, which was fantastic yeah. placement. And then she just immediately, oh my god! We still got hosed on our deposit anyway, though. Nah, whatever. They're <laughs> dicks. But so she goes, oh my god! Well, what do we do? And I was like, I, go get me. I was like, she's like, I don't know. I was like, but I'm bleeding. I was just like, I'm gonna go get something. And she runs up the stairs. This is the point <laughs> where I was heading downstairs because I had finished changing. Mm-hmm. And Bree comes up, and she goes, I don't know what to do. Something like that. I need towels. I need towels. <laughs> no, no. And I, I hear she turtle. Goes, she goes, I need something. I Don't need go something. downstairs. Oh. Do not go downstairs. She goes, do not go downstairs. Preface this, Bree is not good with blood. And turtle was bleeding a lot. She's not good Which with blood. Which is weird coming and from she, a foot. And she says to me, Don't go downstairs. Very firm. And I hear you downstairs. <laughs> a towel would be nice. <laughs> Just well, yelling. Like, a towel would be nice. Well, because I can hear it be like, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. I was like, a towel would be nice. Something to wrap around my foot. And uh, so I'm sitting there. I got my foot up because I'm trying to elevate it because that's just common knowledge. She comes down. I came down. Yeah, he I spring into down. action with the field medic. <laughs> the field medic with paper towels yeah. and duct tape. But, hey, yo, when you cut yourself in a kitchen, you go right to the paper towels and you go to tape. So I'll, actually, a lot of times it's not even tape. It's just paper towels, and you try and like tuck it in the folds to keep it from falling off. Yeah, but if you can't duck it, fuck it. So, oh, what? There you go. That's oh. your first one. Aha. Uh-huh. I've had a couple in here, but anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, I got you wrapped up, and we decided to go to the ER. <laughs> the ER is where the story really takes off. <sighs> that was the weirdest experience. I thought it was awesome. It was funny. So we go in there, tell them what I did. We only waited in the waiting room for like five, ten minutes. Like one other person in there, yeah. Yeah, it was quick, so that was cool. Um, <laughs> go back there, and they're trying to find out what happened. I got stabbed in the foot by a batarang. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, what? They couldn't process that. A, a batarang. What is a batter? What do you mean you got stabbed with a battering? A really jagged knife. So, I I have tattoos. One of the tattoos that I have on my shoulder over here is a batarang in my skin. Like, it looks like I've been stabbed with a batarang on my shoulder. And so, <laughs> they couldn't process what I had done, so I just show them. I was like, this... And they're like, why'd you get a tattoo of a way that you got stabbed? <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, I got stabbed in the foot. Let me run to the tattoo shop real quick. Before I go to the ER. Yeah. Yeah. Let me and get I was this like, tattoo first. Yeah, no, I got I got stabbed in the style that I have a tattoo. I'm like, oh, okay. And then, so they figure all that out. Whatever. This male nurse comes in. He's burly. Yeah, he's a burly. He's a big boy. He's funny, though. He's, he's rolling I mean, with it. He was, he was cool. Like, yeah. Telling the stories. I don't know if he was funny. That. He was kind of like, eh, I don't really want to be I here. I thought you knew him. Okay, I knew him because I had had a kidney stone earlier that year, like a couple months before we even, this, oh gosh, this was the same. So when I had my kidney stone, all my pain was uh, actually like directly in my left testicle. So oh. yeah, we went to the ER because I thought I had torsion. Oh, a twisted testicle? Yeah, so they had three nurses and two doctors in there. You know that and you only this, have, like, a certain amount of time to untwist that nut before you, like, lose that's, it? That's why I was concerned. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was concerned. But this is the same male nurse Dumb that fact. was fondling Uber my smart. bag of goodies. He was, she called your testicle a bag of goodies? That's what I called it. Oh. But he was fondling my, my sack of treats. <laughs> he was all up on my protein bag. There was, like, five people in this room. They're, like, all, like, feeling my nuts. Got a good set so of nuts. This, this is, I mean, this was, I had mine in April, so May, June, July, August. So we're like talking five, not e- not quite five months later. Yeah. Same male nurse takes you, and you I'm like, what? dude, this guy has seen, touched everything in my nutsack. But he didn't even recognize you, did he? I was hoping he wouldn't recognize me, and I was really hoping we wouldn't have the same doctors. You know what, though? I'd have been insulted if he didn't recognize me. You didn't even call me. 
You didn't even just try to send good, me some flowers. Uh, your mom didn't know that the tattoo was pre-stabbing in real life. That's like <laughs> super ironic. <laughs> the, the irony of that blows my mind, actually. So anyway, back to my story. Our story. Our story, sorry. So this doctor comes in. And this dude is like a Midwest George Bush. He's okay. He is the perfect fusion between um, George Bush Jr. Yep. and Hank Hill. Voice looks everything. Yeah. He is exactly the fusion between George Bush and Hank Hill. Everything. Oh. But so he comes in. Okay. What do we got going on here? I'm like, stab Whoosh. myself in the foot. Okay, well, let me take a look. He looks at it. He goes, oh, you're going to need a couple stitches out of that. I'm like, all right, man, whatever you got to do. And he goes, so he's going to numb it, and then he's going to stitch it. And he says it should only take, like, two stitches. All right, I can handle that. And he goes, I'm going to have them clean Doctor, it. Dr. Gaither. I, I don't remember his name, but wow. someone knows him. Yeah, I Shout out to him. He was actually really cool. Like not not talking shit on him. He was actually he, really I mean, really cool. He told us his like life story too. He's yes, like he a did. recovering yes, alcoholic, and you're like, oh yeah, you're about to put stitches in. Like that's you know that's cool. Thank you, sir. Please Thank no, you. Please no shakes. Yeah, Jesus. Please no shaky shake. No hanky. But so uh, the nurse is like, come in, clean me, like clean it up, and bring in the lidocaine. I think is the numbing that they use. Novocaine. It was. I think it was two different things. And you were talking previously about how you were taking a vacation to Myrtle Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about the setup because remember he had to run out of the room. Turtle's sister worked with him. Oh. I didn't know Morgan worked with him. Okay. So anyway. So then they know exactly who we're talking about. Yeah. George so, Bush Jr. and Hank Hill. Yeah. So anyway, they're getting this set up. And the doctor, the doctor was in there and he was getting things set up. And the male nurse comes back into the room and he goes, Doctor. We need you over in six. I thought that they, no, they put the, uh, they gave you the numbing. I got the shot first before that you happened? You got the shot first, yeah. And then he ran out? Because we were talking about your trip to Myrtle Beach, and he's okay. like, oh yeah, I've been to Myrtle so, Beach, blah, blah, blah. So I'm getting ready to take yeah. this motorcycle trip with my dad, and I was like, right. he goes, you're going to have two stitches in. I was like, well, I'm about to be going to the beach. I was actually going to California and Myrtle right. Beach in like the, right. like within a week's Mike? time. Yeah, I was going yeah. out to see my, my buddy out in California. Yep. And I was like, so I'm going to be getting on the beach. I was like, is this, are these stitches going to be out in time? Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll have plenty of time. Okay, it's, it's no problem. <laughs> and I was like, he goes, where are you? I told him I was going to South Carolina. He goes, where are you going to South Carolina? Uh, going to Myrtle Beach. We're going to ride the bikes down there. Oh, Myrtle Beach? Oh, I took my boys down there back in 86. Oh, it was so 83. nice. It was 83? It was 83. I, I was remember. close. But he goes, <laughs> he goes, I took my boys down there in 83. He started talking about that, and then he started like, getting into his life story and shit. And I'm like, bro, stitch me up. Let me yeah, get out of right, here. Right. <laughs> and so, so he gets the shots ready, and he goes, okay. <laughs> he goes, okay. I want you to imagine. You're down there, Myrtle I want you Beach. to imagine that you're in Myrtle Beach, and you're out in the water. <laughs> And the waves are splashing against your legs, so all gentle. nice. And so the gentle. water's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just splashing up against your legs, going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And then and he goes, and then I want you to imagine <laughs> that this tidal <laughs> wave with a, a Volvo. Volvo. <laughs> away with a Volvo. Well, just imagine this tidal wave with a Volvo just comes up and smacks you in the face because that's what this is going to feel like. And I'm just sitting there like... Because that's what this is going to feel like. I was like, dude, what kind of... Treat me like I'm five. Like, and I was... I was like over there sitting in the chair just on my phone, and I heard that. And I'm like, oh, put the phone down. Hey, we got to get a front down. row seat to this one. So then he asked me, he goes, he's getting ready. And he goes, are you ready? And I'm leaning back like this. You were stretched back as far as you could to, yeah. I don't know, so grab I had, something or try and comp. No, nope, I, I had tiger claw. I had a tiger claw pose tiger going claw. on. And he goes, are you ready? I was like, bring it. <laughs> and he sticks that thing in my foot. And it felt like he broke my foot in half, like with a hot iron, just broke it over it. And I'm sitting here going like, ah, ah, <laughs> like I'm about to go like Super Saiyan on it, and just be like, ah. 
And the doctor, I couldn't hear this at the time, but the whole time the doctor's injecting this shit in my foot, he's whoosh, just going, whoosh, 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 whoosh. The whole time, you're like, <laughs> whoosh, 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 whoosh. Connor's sitting there going back and forth, because I remember looking over at him. And he's going back and forth like he would look at me and like concern, and then he would look at the doctor and like smile, oh my God. and then he would look back at me and concern. I'm like, what is he having a oh, conundrum about? I, I was laughing my ass off so bad oh when you would look at me. God. I just tried to like, yeah, dude, hold it in. Oh my gosh! And so then he gets done. He goes, "There you go. wasn't that bad." Oh, what? Oh, fuck, dude, stitch me up, man. Let me get out of here. So. That's the point when that male nurse came back in, yep. and he's like, "Doctor, we've got an emergency." Blah blah blah. It was oh some, my god, some dude. He, he had just gotten a full sleeve tattoo, and he had kept saran wrap around it for a, a week or something. Yeah, like that. for so like was, seven, six or seven days, so he had all saran wrap of, uh, on it. Infected and whatnot. Uh, seps, sepsis. Yeah, yeah septic. Se- They're septic. like, it's yeah. gone septic. It's gone septic. And it was like, it's uh, yeah. turned into a shitter. Whoosh. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so he. He goes, I'll be right back. And he scurries out of there. And I'm like, I'm just laying there yeah. ready to get my foot so, stitched up. So th- at that point, I'm like, <laughs> all right. I, I went over, I grabbed some gloves, and I snapped him. I'm like, let's do this thing. I was like, get after it, dude. Let's, I was like, give me a let's lightning bolt. Let's do this thing. Let's get some stitches. I go, give me what, a lightning bolt. it's only bolt. two, I could do two stitches. Yeah. No, you'd yeah. be fine. And so as Connor's got these gloves on, and he's, gloves on. he's I'm, starting I'm here, to touch like, the utensils, the doctor comes back in. Looks at Connor and goes, oh, you got this? All right, I'm out. All right, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> he walks away. Like, he walks away. And and he didn't come back right away either. No, he and I didn't. Was like, I was like, okay. I yeah, was like, so Connor looks back at me and goes, let's do this. <laughs> sepsis. Your sepsis. Sepsis, yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's close enough. Septic, sepsis. It, it was a shitty situation. It's, you know. I was high. Yeah. I was high on uh, whatever. That broken foot high. Yeah. But so he comes back in. And he asked Connor, he goes, you want to help me with it? And like, so. Uh, that's why I got the gloves on. Yeah. yeah. So the doctor so let were, uh, Connor. They were actually, yeah, they were short staffed in the ER. <laughs> so. So Connor got to play nurse and he got to help stitch up my foot. Yeah. I wish I like. I should probably pull up a picture just for, well, pe- if you, for people that haven't actually like if seen. If you're friends with us on Facebook, it's on both of our Facebooks just If you just haven't recently. actually seen, like this is actually legit. I really did. Um, yeah. Yeah. That was. I helped put stitches in. Yeah, and I've I've never done anything. I don't have a medical background. I've never. You done know what that like reminds that. me of? Remember when you were like fifteen or sixteen, and we were going through high V, and you accidentally pushed something too far <laughs> on the conveyor belt, and you scanned it. And you're like, oh my god, I have a job. I wonder if we can see that. Yeah, that's that's my foot, and that's Connor with the doctor. Like that honestly looks like you're doing all the work, and he's just kind of like, no, 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 to the left, to the left. No, yeah, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. All right, I'll bring it back. That was, like, super cool. Not only to, like, be the field medic and take you to the ER, drive you to the ER and, like, handle that situation. You're a triple threat kind of guy. But to actually, like, help put stitches in your foot. Like, and I didn't just, like, like, I, like, helped push shit through your foot to seal it shut. You should put that on your resume. I should put that on my resume. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that's what, like I said, with the high V thing, when you accidentally scan that, you're like, I have a job now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have work. <laughs> there you go. You've got yeah. ER experience. You're welcome. But no, that's. <laughs> I can handle story. high pressure situations. No. Yeah, actually, you can. Yes, you're actually, I can. You're actually very solid. Yes, I can. But that's because you're quiet all the time. Like, you actually yeah, analyze things. You are, generally. I just talk more in my head. It's all the voices in my head. That like, hey man, I talk to myself more than I talk to anyone else. Am I gonna have to fight the voices in your head? No. Are no, you cheating cool. on me? No, they're straight. They're cool. Mm, okay. Beat some out. Mm. No, we're cool. Uh, Legendary story. Yeah, it, but again though, like the fact that these guys were like, why would you get a tattoo of the way that you got stabbed? That's, I just can't. I think in the moment we didn't appreciate the irony quite as much as no. we do well, now when we're retelling it. And like the best part is, so like people ask all the time about tattoos. I, I've I've got I I made that trip past my uh, t-shirt line. I've got a bunch 
other places. How many do you have? Oh, shit. Fuck. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I got like 11. Oh, I forgot the one on my butt. I got 12. But, no, I got like 12 now. And like, they're, they were all kind of like, see, like, I always want a flow when it comes to tattoos. Like Internal monologue. Thank you, Bree. That's what it is. I've got internal monologue constantly going on. I'm about to fight on. your internal monologue if it's going to be taking time away from me. Uh, come at your brain. My grandma saw my tattoos this past weekend. How did that go? You know, sorry. She didn't see them for the first time. It's just... She I think, actually... Like, I think she finally accepted that I have them. She accepted or she wanted to, like, understand so them? we took... We, we got all... My whole mom, or... Your whole mom? My whole mom's side, minus... All like the great aunts and all that crap, all the cousins. So my grandma, grandpa, and then their kids, and then right. all my cousins. The uh, whole tree. That whole tree. That section of the tree. Because the rest of it's ginormous. But we it's got not to, the size. Yeah, we got together because my aunt came in from Indiana, and we were going to take uh, family, family portraits, family pictures. Were you going to get them painted? No. Like I like, wish that made a comeback. Like 19th century style where we yeah. don't smile? Yeah. No. No. I want to do wish. that. Oh, that'd be cool. Can we do that? Sure. Can yeah. we get our portrait anyway, painted? Not like a character? It wasn't... She saw my tattoos earlier this year when they, I think they came to visit like for, God, fuck, for Father's Day or something and she... Uh, I was wearing a, a full sleeve and I'm kind of like working on my sleeve so I've got tattoos up and you know, they, they go down. I call that a Cracker Jack tattoo it's, sleeve. Stop. Not no it's, no. It's gonna, I understand. It's come together anyway. I, I understand you're gonna be feeling it, but like right now, it looks like you it's, got those it's gonna come together. stick them tattoos out of a Cracker Jack box. It's gonna come together anyway. I I'm, can't wait to see what's done. I wasn't ready for her to see them yet, so I wore like a longer three quarter sleeve. I guess you could call it like a seventh eighth sleeve. Seven eighth. That would put me like right above your wrist. Well, you you can't see any any of my tattoos, with, right? Um. It you have just, a you have still a professional sleeve. Yeah, but when I would bend my elbow, you could just see a little sliver, and just so the tip. yeah, we're just the we're tip. riding in my mom's vehicle, and there's five of us, and I was like, "Yeah, Grandma, I'll ride, bitch," because like I'll sit next to you. <laughs> what? I'll ride, bitch. <laughs> what? You you said I'll ride, and bitch, I, to your grandma? I actually said I'll ride, bitch. <laughs> but like, and she didn't understand it, which was confusing to me because like I know you're. You were in a family of 10 kids. I know your ass rode the hump. Every well, especially then. back then when like I station wagons ass, were a big thing. I know your ass rode the hump. Oh. Uh, I'll take fuck you thought for 500, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you know what riding bitch is. Yeah. yeah. So I had said that. because You know, I want to make her happy. I'm her oldest, and I wanted to sit next to her. Well, we're not even on the trip for long. She's like, oh, what's new? And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. And then she grabs my sleeve, my 7 eighth sleeve, not three-quarter. Ooh. And she pulls it all the way up over my shoulder. So she made it like a negative one eighth sleeve. Yeah, negative one eighth sleeve. Yeah, go from she like seven to negative one. She turned it into like a half tank top, <laughs> stretching it out. I love that shirt. And then she was just pointing at my tattoos. What's that mean? What's why'd you get that? What's this about? Well, so then when we, you know, that was a couple months ago. And then when we took family portraits this past weekend. I had made a bet with a couple of my family members that also have tattoos. I was cause they have tattoos, tattoos, tattoos. Yeah. Since my tattoo was on my left side, I go. I bet you five dollars that Grandma's going to have me standing in the back, so that my left side is covered by other family members. Even with the sleeve, yeah. Well, but I wasn't. I was wearing a. I was wearing one of my bird shirts. Oh, so I've made Classic. bets that yeah, Grandma's going to was going to want me to hide my arm behind other people, and she didn't at all. She let you so, express yourself. She may not may not be express happy about it. Yourself. She may not be happy about it, but she like she has accepted the fact that I'm a tattoo person. <laughs> I mean, look at who my mom is, you know? Well, so my tattoos, my family's always been fine with them as long as they were hidden. They've been yeah, they've like as long as it's I can I you know I would definitely say that they would rather you not have tattoos, but they've been it, okay with it, it. grown on it, but yeah. especially since, like, for the most part, I stayed respectable yeah, about it's it, grown. and I kept yeah. it, I kept it, like, t-shirt above the t-shirt line, and most, I'll say, 
all my tattoos have a meaning behind it, and I have put a good chunk of thought into most of them. There's I mean, a couple all, all of tattoos them. have meaning, you know. I like it. Well, yeah, it I mean, it, it means different things to different people, but like mine, yeah. mine have like such a deep meaning that it's like yeah. I could honestly, like people, if I told them my tattoo stories, they would treat it like poetry and snap. Like I'm like I could tell my shit that don't judge me. I could do it like a Def Jam. I could tell stories about my tattoos and everybody like that's so deep. But like when I did the when I went for the forearm, the first thing that my grandma did because I like I put my forearm on the table to like let it be out there. Mm-hmm. And she was talking to somebody and she was mid sentence and she turned to look over and she saw it and she reaches over and just goes like real hard, like pushes on it to see if it wipes to try off. And smear it off. Yeah, to see if it was fake. Like shaking the whole ass table. <clears throat> Earthquake. But so she, that's how aggressive it was. She shook mm-hmm. the whole table there. But she like pushed real hard, like trying to see what it was. And this is still a fresh tattoo. Like I want to say it was like same day. I just Damn. I had seven hours into this, and she just like <clears throat> on my arm, and she's is that real? Yeah. And she got mad, and she's like, why do you got it? And I was like, water calms me down. I was like, this is my calm side. I was like, this is it's peaceful to me. I like, didn't, I, I didn't realize that one about. About the water? Yeah, I didn't realize that. I don't I've, think I've always that loved one. water. No, like, about her. Oh, about her trying tattoo. to smear it? Well, yeah, because that's your most recent tattoo, and you mm-hmm. had, what, 10 tattoos oh, had, before that. Yeah. and like, But none of them were as visible as well, that. Well, and even I've got two on my feet. Uh, in my mom and dad's she handwriting, thought it was colored markers. Yeah, she thought it was colored markers. She thought I was like drawing myself with sharpie, but like, mm, yeah, mm, 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 mm. I'm bored. Like I'm that talented. Mm-hmm. No, also like it's on your right arm. Yeah, yeah, I'm that talented. I don't think they would have. I don't think they would have looked. No, God, I wonder if <laughs> she's just like saying that Adam did a bad job because I've had all my tattoos done by one guy. Mm-hmm. Like we're close, but uh, so he uh. I, I have two tattoos on my feet that are in my mom and dad's handwriting. That's something you would do, so can't blame her. Would you color on yourself with Crayola? You know days? what? If I get bored enough, it's we're in boring you know, times. Have you ever done the Have you ever done the thing where you make a face on your on your hand to talk to somebody? No. You've never been that bored and make a face. Connor. No. Connor, look at me. Give me a kiss. No. Whatever, dude. Don't judge me in my style. I've never done that. But anyway, so she saw the ones that are on my feet that my mom and dad, like it's in their handwriting. It's an inspirational thing. One small step, one giant leap. Mm -hmm. Take one small step towards doing something. That's a giant leap to getting it done. That's the hardest part of anything is just making that initial step to get this going. Right. This podcast is a good example of that. That's right. The hardest part was just committing to... Well, you brought it up, and I'm like, you know what? We're just going to make this happen. Yeah. So it's like... But instead of sitting here talking about it for I can months, only do that with Mr. Caster's permission. What are we doing? Oh, trying to say Fernando? Yeah, don't do that. That's that's a Mr. Caster thing, so I can't do that. I can, because I'm not committed to it. No, you can't. It's copyrighted. It is not. It's copyrighted. Show me the paperwork. Later. That's what I thought. Anyway, so my nanners, she saw... Uh, the tattoos like from my parents and she goes where's mine at and I was like oh no joke I'm like you want me to get a tattoo for you bet I'm gonna get that shit on my neck she can't be mad at it if it's devoted to her mm-hmm. I would not get a tattoo on my neck I no. I got too many rolls like also I've been rocking a beard for oh, like nine years I have not seen my cheeks, well, like the lower part of my cheeks or my chins in like nine years. I don't remember what your jawline looks like. I don't have one because I'm fat. I've I've lost mine. Just, you know, we just gain weight as we get older. It's COVID. You gain the COVID-19. No, I think it's just been the last few years just working in a kitchen. Because you're always snacking. We don't eat as much as people think. People, whoa, whoa, whoa. So people always say... But what's the rule about a skinny chef? Never trust a skinny chef is yeah. what they say, but it's bullshit because... The, the all the line cooks are skinny because they're working their asses off and you don't have time to eat. If you ever see a line cook eating, 100% of the time they're eating over a trash can and they're not sitting down. So they're like the kitchen they're, they're like They're not sitting down like 90% of the time. That little 10%, they might be on like a milk crate or something. They're like the possums of the kitchen. Yeah, they're, they're literally raccoons. They're actually... 
What are you doing over there? They're literally raccoons. Yeah. Oh, Christian goes, do it, Emperor Palpatine. Or do you want to do the uh, Shia LaBeouf? Just do it. No, I like Palpatine so what, better. So what Christian does is he, like, he gets really close on the microphone like this, and he goes, Fernando. He does that. Why? I don't know, but uh, everyone absolutely loves it. Because he, he mostly streams a video game, and one of the characters in the game is Fernando. Nerd. And it's, dude, it's it's awesome. It's like, it's a little great thing that he coined. How often do you, okay, I know that you've lost your projection, your projector screen. Yeah, we just had um, that whole, gosh, what was it called? Um, a meltdown. Storm. Derrico. That whole Derrico thing that happened. Oh. oh. The, the huge windstorms that came yeah, yeah, yeah. and like decimated whoa, 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 Cedar Rapids and kind why of Why is it called a Derrico? I don't, I don't know. No, no, no. It's a Iowa hurricane. They called it, they coined it Derrico. Anyways, we lost power for almost 24 hours and when our power came back on, it just surged through our projector and it completely melted the inside of the projector. So we have to get, yeah. we, we got to get a totally different projector. See, why'd you that's... bring that up? What? Why'd you, why'd you bring that up? What, the projector? Yeah. Well, because I was going to ask you about your video games. Because um, that was like your main spot to play your video games, no, like on I the just, Wii. I just play in the guest bedroom. Oh. And then Oscar will take a dump, and I just like got to live with it. Because <laughs> he doesn't bury his shits. Just got to commit. Well, he can't. He's only got one I arm. I know. Uh, I've got a cat that's got only three legs, and so after he does his business in the box, he goes and he like tries to bury it, and he just does that so he's trying he just doesn't <laughs> he ghost buries it he with just, his nub he physically doesn't have the arm to bury it so it's it's kind of cool because you see animal instincts that way yeah well, like his uh, instinct is just telling him bury it that's the, the proper thing to do he probably still feels it like if you tickle where it should be i I'll, wonder if you would yeah feel i'll it. pet him his shoulder blade's missing but i'll kind of pet him and that's sometimes i like yeah. i pull on that spot it's kind of fun what yeah i'll just pull on his like his missing arm flab what the fuck? He likes it. I don't know. How do you know? Yeah, I'm sure you like weird stuff. Not like that. Don't pull on my flap. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> At least I don't like, do any butthole stuff to him. <laughs> Anything. Uh, <laughs> just try to put a finger in. No. Fingers don't go in buttholes. That's not for this episode. Okay. Soon. No. Um. No. <laughs> no, because like... See, we don't have any amputee cats or anything like that we got three cats at home mm -hmm. all of them are dudes but like urinary tract issues well okay but that's because uh somebody told me that it's uh male cats just always have that issue well we were also i i was because like when i bought my house it was awesome quiet house. oh my god so i bought my house like the hurricane on, was called laura christian Derrico wasn't part of the hurricane. You're a Laura. Derrico was just a separate storm that swept across the Midwest. Yeah. So anyway. And like wrecked Cedar Rapids big time. Are they fixed yet? You know, I haven't checked, but I think it was just last week. There were still 60,000 people without power. We we took a disc golf trip. I, I went with uh, my buddy Colin and Zach, and we took a disc golf trip to S Cedar Rapids and Iowa City areas the very next day. And, I mean, we're counting over 20 semis tipped over on the highway. We Still? Well, it was the very next day after, oh. after Derrico happened. You left your house with no power? Yeah. <laughs> what am I going to do in the house without power? I don't know. Call somebody and tell them to come fix it. No. What it, you got to stay to protect your home. You couldn't even get through to Mid-American. Like, no. No. They just left it off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> like, we know. <laughs> Leave us <Right>. alone. <laughs> yeah. But we had even passed, like, an RV lot. The day after, and like one in three RVs were flipped over on their side. They're just losing money on the highway. We're over there on like 380 or whatever that highway is, and there's just trees just demolishing houses. Do you think RV lots? It looked like the uh, the house insurance cards on the game Life, you know, like oh, when a tree just goes right through it. That's life. legitimately what Cedar Rapids looked like. Yeah, do you think RV lots are the fancy version of a trailer park? No. Or a dirtier version of the no. trailer park. Neither. Why? It's kind of the same thing. Kind of. Like it's an actual mobile home. But it's a sales lot. They're making sales. 
Oh, you're talking about that's like, the only purpose of it. I'm talking about. Oh, you're like, talking about where they actually sell RVs. Where they sell the oh, RVs. I thought you were talking about like where people go to park to like no. camp. No, 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 no. They where were they actually, do like white people camping. No. no, they're actually selling the RVs. Oh. And so one, in, like one in three, are flipped over. Were there any sales going? That's on? just lost inventory. Uh, I doubt I'll be it. Like, I give you five bucks. I doubt it. Give you five bucks for that one tipped over. I'll tip it back over myself. What's it gonna have? A couple scrapes and a busted window. There's no, there's no dishes in there or anything like that. Bree even goes, I crouch behind the bar to have a granola bar today mid shift. It's the industry life. It really is. Yeah, well, it really is. We used to do this thing at a, a, a past place I worked. Um, I started calling it Chef Tax. <gasps> what? Because we would, it, it was Chef Tax. It was some place I worked. Uh, we slice the duck and we slice it really thin and I'd be like, Oh, Chef Tex, it's kinda like quality control, but I just called it Chef Tex and I'd I'd take a slice. I totally ate a slice. So like, it's Chef Tex, Chef Tax. Tax. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I thought yeah. you said Tex. I was like, that makes no nope. sense. Chef Tax. You guys have weird phrases in that business. We do. Like toe box still. It's Togo. Togo. Whatever, man. Like why? It's just because we say so like I can ask you, hey, can I get a to-go box, or is it quicker? Because it's all about speed, too. To-go. Speed and efficient. S- speed and being efficient. You're, I said, I sp- the, you're the, adding the, a letter. Uh, blah, blah, uh, blah, blah. This freaking podcast should be called, There's a Marble in My Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what we say is, hey, can I get a to-go? Hey, can I get a to-go? But you it's add just, a letter. No, no I to don't. To-go. That doesn't seem faster to me. To go, to go, to go, to go, to go is what we call a to go box. Yeah, I want to emphasize on toe. Just you just gotta let it be. No, nope. just gotta let it be. That's why I can't work in a kitchen. Keep it Disney. You keep it Disney. Keep it Disney. No, I keep it Disney. Don't yell at me. Okay. <laughs> so speaking of tattoos, though, what are you gonna do to finish that? I'm gonna get some root vegetables. <laughs> it's super hard. I look like a That's super the most gangster way I've ever heard. <laughs> root vegetables. Super badass. I'm gonna get some root vegetables. No one's gonna mess with me. <laughs> if they see me in a dark alley and they see that carrot, they're gonna turn around. <laughs> gonna get some carrot. You already got some maize on there. I do. I've got corn and some nasturtium, leaves and flowers. Yep. It's a lot of words that I don't know. Yep. My favorite part, so Chef here, like, he does these pop-ups. Breakfast. Breakfast. Dude, can you do a pop-up breakfast? Breakfast pop-up? I could. Will I? Eh, probably not. Why not? It's my least favorite meal of the day. How is it your least favorite meal? How often do you actually have breakfast? There's there's so many standard, like, expectations with what breakfast is. It doesn't leave as much room I think you're for, putting too much for my own personal interpretation on breakfast. Ha, what? No, dude, you just... Name breakfast foods. Eggs, pancakes, waffles, sausage, chicken okay. fried steak. So what I'm saying is that list that you're naming off for breakfast foods is significantly smaller than if I was like, hey, name dinner foods. Pasta. That, that list is going to be way bigger, right? Pasta. So there's just... There's less options for breakfast. I mean, I, I could totally innovate something, and then people would be like, What about a brunch? No, what about I don't a eat brunch? This for breakfast. What about a brunch? Yeah, I have coffee for breakfast. That's, that's the chef breakfast. Breakfast is easily the best. Okay, Duff. Okay. See, I don't do we'll talk don't about do that breakfast later. at all. We'll talk about that later. Like, I try to do breakfast, so like if I could knock out some cereal or something, but most of the time, because I'm still so childish, like, I'd love to sleep through breakfast. To me, I mean, everybody says... You wake up before breakfast. I do wake up before breakfast. So how do you sleep through it if you wake up before to go to work? Because, like, I don't wake up early to put breakfast into my day. Like, I take that breakfast time that most people wake up to do breakfast, and I take that opportunity to sleep. Because I'd rather finish off a dream than... Pasta. 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 But, like... I don't know. Yo, my uh, my breakfast is like... Can I like, get a sausage and mushroom pizza? Ugh, mushrooms are gross. Can I get a sausage and mushroom pizza? 
Mushrooms are funguses, and you shouldn't eat them. Boom. I said it. Fight me. We've had this argument before. You tricked me into eating mushrooms before. It, it didn't work well for you. I still say I won. No, because I brought up the cheese argument. That's different. Uh, cheese tastes good. You know what? We're just going to move on. We're just going to move on. We're not going to have this. We're not going to do this right now. We're not going to do this right now. We're not going to do this right now. Um, we said breakfast earlier. I kind of want to talk about why we said breakfast. And then breakfast. we kind of went into our, our story before talking about like how we want to edit ourselves. I, I want to try and not, mm. I, I don't want to just pop off F-bombs and stuff. I want to try not to curse. It's so difficult not to, especially when I get excited. With our, with our jobs, it's kind of like secondhand, yeah. you know, we, we've got one of those like sailor type jobs where it's just, it's, it's the nature of the work yep. as you just pop it off. It flows, but it flows in our industry. We're going to try to edit ourselves, and the reason we said breakfast is because that was the best TV edit that we've ever, ever watched. Breakfast. When we were in school, I mean, so we're probably talking. This was somewhere, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. We were watching. Stop. <laughs> stop it. I'm not. I'm not comfortable with that. <clears throat> Just gonna hold your hand. We were. Uh, Just gonna hold your hand. We were watching. Um, Happy Gilmore on ABC Family. Yeah, of all the places. This is yeah, a weird it, way it was, to hold hands. It, it is. It was on ABC Family, Happy Gilmore was. And it's the scene where Shooter McGavin... Shooter! What was the chick's name in the movie? Claire? Sarah? Steve? Uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't Steve. <laughs> Vanessa! Was it? I don't know. I, I it don't just remember. sounds good. Um, the lady that did the PR work that yep. eventually fell for Happy I Gilmore. I think it was Vanessa. I'll put. I'll put. I'll put I a dollar. The on actress it. was on Modern Family. You know, I'll, that chick. We all knew who, who I'm talking about. The the main chick that falls for Happy Gilmore. She yeah. asked Shooter McGavin, "Can I get you anything?" And in then, the traditional movie, in the traditional movie. movie, he says, "I'll take a Pepsi." Oh, Miss, a diet, diet. Pepsi. Yeah. So in on this particular edit of Happy Gilmore, <laughs> I don't get on cable ABC edits. on ABC Family for whatever reason, he goes instead of Pepsi, they edited out Pepsi. Not even a bad word. Not e- not even a bad word. I mean, I'm gonna guess and he that goes. <laughs> that means that ABC is a Coke a Coke drinker. ABC Family must drink Coke. Yeah. But yeah. So instead, instead of, of saying Pepsi, Pepsi, he goes breakfast. Breakfast, Miss. I'll have a breakfast. But like, and it's not and a then, shooter. Then it's a voiceover. He proceeded to say, "Diet." Yeah, <laughs> can I get a diet breakfast? <laughs> Give me a diet breakfast. How the fuck do you make a diet? I'll have a an egg white omelet. Hold the egg white. I don't know. Give me an egg white omelet and oatmeal with no brown sugar. Yeah. Ugh. Who eats oatmeal with no brown sugar? Yeah. Who eats oatmeal? Oatmeal's gross, dude. It's like somebody already chewed it up and spit it in the bowl. Ask Bree about Malto meal. She'd rather have Malto meal than oatmeal. Are you kidding me? I'd rather have Captain Crunch. Fair, I'll sacrifice the roof of my mouth. Yeah, peace out, roof of your mouth. I don't care. But no, nah, that's so. That's one of our favorite edits from a movie, uh, as far as like censorship it, it goes. It wasn't even a bad word. It's, no. It's, it's a sponsorship. They thing. didn't even say like poo poo or pee pee or like anything <laughs> little like that that you had Gotta to get edit a out. Poo-poo platter. <laughs> it was, but uh, no. So we ch- we boxed. try to tell each other, and to... they kind of like he balked too. Like it, yeah. like, like it, well, if you imagine a chicken saying breakfast, breakfast, breakfast. It's like he's got those like fat jowls. Like yeah. if a bulldog could talk, that's how the bulldog would say breakfast, which would just be adorable. But uh. No, we try to tell ourselves, like, if we're going to try to uh, be family friendly, since we have most of our family and friends watching this, uh, or if we're out in public and it's not okay to be a uh, filthy mouth, we try to tell ourselves that we're going to keep it Disney. Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, on the Disney Channel... Especially now. I mean, I feel like if you go back on the Disney Plus Mm -hmm. and you watch some of the shit from like 2000s and earlier, there's some dirty stuff on there. Really? Yeah. um, Like kind of how SpongeBob does it? Kind of, yeah. Where like they definitely put in like the adult humor in there and like going back and watching it as an adult. Like on Lilo and Stitch? 
<sighs> Pillow. Truce. That's what I thought. Truce. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. Truce. <laughs> okay. Okay. But anyway, so no if more. you go back. Truce. <laughs> if you go back and you watch. <laughs> Truce, 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 truce. <laughs> but if you go back and you watch some of that shit from back in the day, it was just, uh, it was veered more towards, I would say, like teenagers. Mm. And I feel like okay. nowadays it's straight up like five years old. Hmm. Like they want to, they, you know, they want to keep kids young and innocent and shit like that. And it's like <sighs> cool beans, but... I feel like having a little bit of dark humor or a little bit of adult humor kind of gets kids ready for the adult world. Yeah. Because if if you think it's all sunshine and rainbows, the first time you get a real job or your car breaks down Dude. or something like that, life is going to just slap you in the face. going to give you a big gerbs. old mushroom stamp right there. Real gerbs. Real gerbs. Which, like, I don't know. My... My first job was Target. I rocked that job for like four years. You used to take the barcodes, take the stickers, slap them on things, and then play laser tag with yeah. the bar scanner. Well, I, you gotta get you get bored doing that job, man. Like, it's they take it so serious. Like the lifers that do those jobs, mm -hmm. the dudes that have been like working at Target, Walmart, Kmart, RIP. Um, you know, stuff like that that have been doing it for like 20 years and they take that shit so seriously, like that they've, they've earned medals from that job. A 16 year old coming in there, like just, I'm going to make seven fifty an hour. All right. Is that what you made? Oh yeah. Made seven fifty an hour. Uh, made Ages yourself a little bit. Made seven fifty an hour. I What's was minimum like, wage right now? 825? I think eight, it's 850 Yeah. Man. Something, I don't know. But like back then, I mean, seven fifty was dope. You work twelve, sixteen hours a week, like do f four, four hour shifts a week, and mm -hmm. you thought you were rolling in it. I remember my first check from Target was like two hundred. Yeah, I was gonna say like two fifty, maybe. Yeah, like two fifty if I was lucky, mm -hmm. and I thought I was balling, oh, dude. Balling. Oh, oh yeah. man, yo, did you, did you cash it completely and then just like rock out to the cash in your wallet? Oh yeah, like I had a fat stack, not of like, not of like tens. I went well, and got like twenty ones. Uh, of course, like, I want to make it look. Of course, thick. you didn't get tens because tens is the worst dollar. How tens are the worst dollar bill, hands down the worst dollar bill. Who's on the ten? Alexander Hamilton. What just, you got against Alexander the, Hamilton? He's just the biggest pussy in history. Like what? he lost a duel, and then they give him the ten dollar bill. What a pussy. I'm sure he's done something remarkable. I mean, yeah, sure. He was like the first secretary of treasury, blah, 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 whatever. But he lost a duel. <laughs> he lost a duel. Like, you know. Hey, you've lost pistol, a duel in your day. Pistols at dawn. You know, like. <laughs> like <laughs> Out in the dirt street, you scumbag. We dueled at dawn. Pistols at dawn. Do like, you think maybe he lost because he didn't really scout out the street and he had the sun in his, in his eyes and he's like, oh, crap. Did he draw yet? Pow. Ow. You know. I don't really know the history of why he lost. I just kind of assume that it's because he's a puss. <laughs> I played he, cards with him one time. He he's a puss. He didn't fire quick enough or accurate enough, and then he's on the ten dollar bill. Like that's who we want to look up to. That's who we want to look up to. Well, I mean, someone that lost a duel. Hey, like I said, remember those airsoft duels? You lost one of those. I won them. No, no, no. You lost one. I, won. I, I won. definitely lost because I got shot in the nipple. I won. I shot you in the eye. No, no, no. You almost shot me in the eye. I did Luckily, shoot me in the eye. Steve, this is parenting. This is parenting. This is one of the best stories about parenting. Where he, we're out here and we're shooting. We're shooting each other these airsoft pistols. We're like 10 paces away. And they're the spring action ones. So you get like one shot. So take 10 steps away. We were doing pistols at dawn. Yeah, pistols at dawn. It was probably three o'clock, but whatever. It was like three o'clock. <laughs> and so pistols at dawn. We go shoot each other, and we would shoot, and people got hit, and whatever. I, I remember I took like a uh, ricochet or something off the nipple, hurt so bad. 
But so like we were like four rounds into this, and it was between myself, Connor, and our friend Zach, and uh, Steve. Was he your stepdad? Yeah. Yeah. My stepdad. Stepdad. Uh, he's coming out of the house, and he sees us in the backyard, and he just he's walking down the steps, and he turns and looks at us, and like yeah, so nonchalant. Well, there was like a little disappointment in his eyes, and he kind of just <laughs> looks at us like. Hmm. Pretty sure he looked at you. He was like, "Glad I didn't birth that one." Yeah, <laughs> just looking at us, and he's like, "Hmm, don't you, uh, don't you guys think you should be uh, wearing some uh, glasses? Yeah, or some uh, goggles?" No, no, no. There, you, there was not that much motion. It was just like, like it was he, disappointment. He was, no, he was don't trying to. He was trying to suggest it. On? He, he was. He was trying to suggest it. He said it in a way that like was very suggestive. He didn't want to force it on us. He wanted no. to be cool. He and wanted us to be smart and go do it ourselves. He, he wanted to be cool, but he like. Didn't have it in him to be like, hey, dumbasses, like, put some glasses on. <laughs> he was just like, you dumb uh, shit. Shouldn't you, uh, shouldn't you guys be wearing some uh, goggles? So, next round, like, I think we tried telling him no, and he goes, you need to go put glasses on. And we put glasses on. Put, and the put very some sunglasses on. I had the big the old aviators. Very next shot. Next shot, ringer, right off I my shoot Kyle arm. right in the eye. And like, we were like, oh, my God, thank you, Steve. Yep, like, <laughs> that man knows something. Oh, my gosh, thank that you. That dude was smart. Yeah. I'll give him that. He knows how to protect his kids. But those were some good times from back then. It's, if you could go back, if you could go back, like, would you still do all the dumb, crazy things that we did? Or would you try to, would you try to curb any of that? I would still do the dumb, stupid stuff. I think I would do more. Like when we would do like... I think I would definitely do more. <laughs> when I'd like hop in a shopping cart and like Aaron would push me into a moving car. Like I would probably do stuff like that still. You know, like the stuff that like hurts and like makes you really feel alive and you're like, yeah, <laughs> this is fun, but that freaking End up hurt. with a broken arm. I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah, but I mean, if you put me back in time like that, I'm just going to follow my career path a little sooner. Just figure it out just a little bit sooner. That's all. That's the only thing I'd do different. I wouldn't do anything else different. And I probably would have, like, bought stock before this year. <laughs> would have invested. And would've... sold it before this year. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I heard the stock market's doing okay. I don't actually know. but yeah. well, Probably now. I don't follow hmm. that, really. No, that's too many numbers for I me. I think there's a certain age where you, like, really start to follow it. And I don't think we've hit that age yet. Maybe I don't like have over, enough gray hairs. Over forty, and then like we have can. Have you started to get gray hairs yet? You're all blonde. Not that I know of. I haven't started. I haven't started. Gray I like hairs that yet. you're bringing this back. Yeah, it's just kind of because I'm lazy. I like it though. And and my Dad's honestly, character. my uh, electric razor is just not as good as it once was. So I've got some chin hair because that's the thickest of the facial hair. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, ch- I'll trim mine off and I'll donate it to you. We'll make a beard wig. That'd be nice. Make some plugs for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That'd work. I got you, dog. Yeah. I got you. Oh, well, I think this was a good start for all of us. I think this was a fun little intro. I think we're, I think we're going to have a lot more stories and a lot more fun times we're to be at had. almost an hour and a half. That's pretty, pretty yeah. good. I wonder how much of that was the uh, battering incident story. Oh, dude. But that's one of my favorites. We, I mean, we've definitely got more stories yeah. lined up, but uh, that's that's definitely one of my favorites. It just hits at everything. Shock, <laughs> awe, <laughs> panic. Love. Hilarity. I'm going to make people question our relationship throughout this entire podcast. Yeah, whatever. But my hands are over here. Even though I'm due to be wed at the end of the year. My hands are in my own lap, so. Mm. We'll see. You did hold my hand there. You've kissed me on the neck before. No. Yeah, you did. No. I'm pretty sure I have a picture of it. Fifth Amendment. (laughs) (laughs) Don't deny it. No, what happened is you slung me over your shoulder and I was farting. No, 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 no. Yeah, I was kissing people in the neck. No, not even that night. This was was more recently. That was that night. That night you did kiss me on the neck too, but that was, I'll give that to Drunk Connor. 
I also had to pull your pants up and like get you off the toilet. So, yeah. Just I was just peeing though. Like you didn't have to like wipe me or anything. I was just peeing. No, I would have, but no. Wow, you would have wiped me. Commitment, bro. Wow, bro. I am ride or die. That's ride or die. Hundred percent. I don't even if care. If you will wipe your best friend's ass, that's ride or die right there. Dude, I mean, at some point, you might wow. have to do it for me. Yeah. Like, what happens if I break both arms and Liz is working somewhere and she can't get there and I'm stuck on the turlet and I'm like, I need somebody and I call you and I go, Connor, I'm on the turlet. It was Am it was Taco turlet? Tuesday. Like... I'd wipe for you. It's some soupy stuff. Get in there. Or at least help me in the shower. Why does it got to be soupy? Because it's yeah, Tuesday. I'll wipe. I'll wipe. Bro, it's better than chunky. I won't like it, but I, I would do it. Yeah. You don't I mean, have to like it. I'm not going to like have a smile on my face. That's friendship. I won't let you forget about it, but yeah, yeah, I'd wipe. I'd wipe. I'll never forget about it. That would be the sweetest thing I've ever heard. I would wipe. Yeah. That's all we got to do for I would other. also comment on your diet. <laughs> Dude, I don't have a diet. Look at this. My diet is a sea diet. I see it as I eat it. I don't even care. Veggies are gross. I'm legitimately the equivalent of a 12-year-old when it comes to diet. Yeah. I am. I'm trying to cut pop out, though. Okay, so if there's ever a situation that's going to come up where you think that you might need me to wipe for you. Yeah. Less sugar, please. Go easy on the <laughs> you sugar. You don't want green? I don't want green. <laughs> Yo, it's 2020. You're supposed to go green. I don't want green. <laughs> A little more carbs, a little more potatoes, maybe some cheese, you know? So you want it solid? Solid. Oh, you want to take a chance of like a clean break? I want a clean break. Oh, all right, fine. I would rather take that wipe and be like, hey, good job, buddy. <laughs> Pat me on the back. Good, good job. job good job pooping. Good job <laughs> I'll take it. All right. Yep. Carbs, potatoes, and cheese, please. Fine. If I break my arms, then you have to come cook for me. Yeah, I'll cook for you. All right. I'll cook for you, and then I'll, like, wipe for you. Sounds like marriage to me. Liz, take notes. That looks like our time, though. I think Hour it is. 32. Ooh. Look at that. That's a long laster right there. Yeah. I, I feel like we that got a little out of hand. You know well, what, not though? out of hand. Time got away from us. I don't care, because we had fun doing it. Yay. Maybe next time we'll do a straight NPR style. Where we're going to get on here. Yeah. We're going to tell some sweet stories. And uh, we might talk some recipes. I think 9 p.m. is cool, but uh, moving forward, maybe 8 or 8.30, something just a little bit earlier so that we can kind of jump into it. <laughs> I'm sleepy. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see once I start back up work. We might have to shift from there. But for now, I 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. Thursdays. Maybe 8 o'clock, uh, 8.30. Maybe our viewers, all six of you. Thank you for sticking with us. Hey, it was like 10, 11 all night. I know. We broke into double digits. Huzzah. I tried not to cry, but uh, I think we'll uh, call this one a night. We'll save all the other content for next week. We'll have some more fun content, some more fun stories. But um, as of now, I think we're going to give our little send off here. And uh, I'm going to tell you, K, love you. Bye. That works. Does it? K love you bye. K love you bye. K love you bye.